There is unity in the oppression. There must be absolute unity and determination in the response.
up my way with your pepper spray. All I can do is watch your hips sway. So come on now, police woman in your blue uniform. Let me turn you on. Arrest me. Arrest me. Arrest me. Don't you know that I will turn you on with your old baton? I will turn you on with your handcuffs on. Come on, police woman in your blue uniform. Let me turn you on. to two British citizens wanting to ask questions. Pretty shoddy. And it's raining now. Third venue today. Well, just a bogus red hearing. Um, the US Constitution protects publishers, journalists, and whistleblowers, but his crime was just to have broken the silence and provided, um, shown that we are complicit by failing to speak out against the legal wars and the attacks on this, this journalist who has actually provided the real truth and the deceit of Western governments. There's no investigative journalism in our lifetime who, who's equal in importance in terms of the information he has provided through WikiLeaks. He's called rapacious power to account. He's shown that, that our governments are supporting 70% of the military um, dictatorships around the world, um, including Saudi Arabia, which has an appalling record in, in terms of human rights and the treatment of women. It also is is attacking on behalf of United States Yemen and, and we know that millions of people are a threat now in Yemen of starvation because they're closing the last last port there which is providing the human humanitarian um, aid. At the same time the, the drone exit institution that we don't really hear of of innocent people all through the Middle East and any part of the world. Malcolm Turnbull can remain silent or he can seize this opportunity and use his his government's diplomatic influence to defend the life of, a, of an Australian citizen, a, a, a really top Australian citizen, whose courageous public service is recognised by countless people across the world. He can bring Julian Assange home, and that's what we ask him to do right now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.
right, we're gonna take it away now. Bye bye, Beho. Until the next time. This will be where we come from the conception. It's been a few people walking past today and taking an interest, which is great. It's just what we want. Some people are like, who's Julian? That astounds me, really, but anyway. Some people are like, we're with her, and I think those people really need to do some more investigation. But anyway, here we are. Free speech, freedom of press. Not 1984, if we can help it.
care for democracy. We protect you know the land, not your scheme. Yeah, we will. We'll be mindful of that. Thank you. We focused on lies in the social media, but not those in the internet. I want to point out the brazen hypocrisy of World Press Freedom Day being hosted by the UK government at this dark time. Julian Assange has been persecuted by war criminals and the corrupt that he exposed are still sitting in positions of power in the government on both sides of the aisle as well as in the, much of the media. Imagine the precedent Trump is setting that any country could extradite any foreign journalist or publisher and make them subject to draconian laws, possibly the death penalty, just because they publish truth about the love government's war crimes. Imagine if that state was Saudi Arabia. We call on the world media to stand by their award-winning colleague and Nobel Prize, Peace Prize nominee, Endless smears and lies about an anti-war hero. You want to know how to get people trusting me more? Tell the truth. Stop delivering a one-sided, sanctioned, government-sanctioned narrative. That is what is going on here. Thank you. In being held to account of justice, but it's not, I would say, a media and freedom issue. Publisher. Well, the Tartan Guardian has done quite a lot on this question of whether he's a journalist or not, and has concluded that he's not. And their story on Manafort was a disgrace. Well, what about free speech? We were just talking about that. Wonderful thing I know the Commissioner of Canada. So these emerging threads and a number of issues canvassed by the panel today provided the impetus for Canada's decision to co-host the first global conference for media freedom with the United Kingdom and London that will be on July 10 to 11. Press Freedom Day led us again to doing our part to raise awareness about the importance of freedom of the press and freedom of expression. Thank you, Ms.
Thank you. Hello, darling. Yes. When protecting their war machine, no, they don't. When protecting Yeah, we will. We'll be mindful of that. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, that's not. Thank you. Leave some space for the pretty castle. <laughs> free Julian. <laughs> some free Julian Assange protesters coming down, coming down towards the uh, U.S. Embassy. Here we come along, uh, we're just up to the corner of the US Embassy here in Thorndon, Wellington. Free Assange demonstrators taking their works seriously. The world famous violinist and guitarist for Assange Freedom was here waiting.